Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let's get started. So this week we are going to do the lab three. It's about the DNS stuff, domain name server. This will be like pretty easy to be understand. Uh, don't worry, let's have a look at it later. But the hardest part about the lab three is about the socket programming. I reckon most of us didn't have the experience of this. So we are going to use the socket and let's see how it goes. So it should be quite similar comparing to the lab two. Like, have you guys have any difficulties related to the like lab two, the last question? Just want to clarify the following statement means the timeout should be set six hundred. Uh, 600 milliseconds. I'm not pretty sure. I will have a check of it later. Let's, let's have a look at the end of this session. Yeah, no worries. Okay, before we go to the lab three, there are some important notes. We have already released the lab one mark. So you can have a check of it like right now, just in case you didn't receive it. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't type it out. So if you find any, like any question, for example, you didn't receive your mark and you didn't get a, get a feedback and you are not sure why you lose the marks. So you can send me an email. And if you have any general question related to the lab, you can just use the forum because most of the question will be posted here and you, uh, you will be likely, you can find the answer directly. <clears throat> and we will, uh, there will be a midterm exam in week seven. So please be aware of this and maybe like do the preparation for now but the midterm exam will be like a bit hard comparing to the final exam so if you want to get a, like get, get a hd in this course you may spend a lot of time on, on the midterm exam but don't worry too much we will go through the dns part from last week and in week five and week six, oh, we don't have any session on week six. In week five, we are going to have a like tutorial about the midterm exam. We are going to go through some like uh, mock test or some similar question on the midterm exam. So it's better to come to the uh, tutorial in week five. And we will also going to go through the like important knowledge points from week one to week five, just to help you to understand which part is the like important knowledge point for the meta exam. And then we'll have more information coming like by the end of this week and next week. So don't worry too much. And we are going to release the assignment by this week. It will be quite similar to like uh will be quite similar to the client and the server from last week. If you still remember the programming uh, task, which asking us to write a uh, client. So we are going to write a client and a server that can be communicate with each other. 
there will be like have some extra task on that but like if you are comfortable with the last week programming task it will not be very hard like any question regarding to the meta exam or assignment No, uh, my lab one no marked. Uh, I may need to have a check. If possible, could you please send me your? Ah, I think it should be released by yesterday. But like, can anyone else check your assignment? But uh, your lab one marking. If this one is not released, maybe it's controlled by the admin because admin didn't publish it, publish the marking. Because I read the announcement, it says will be released by Wednesday, isn't it? But I just want you to have a look over the feedback before you, like, before the deadline of lab two. Does anyone get the lab one marking? But don't worry too much because most of the students get the full mark on lab one. They have done a very great job. Okay, please send me an email by like Wednesday or something. Because they say we are going to release it on Wednesday. But actually, we have done the marking yesterday. Let's see. Okay, so let's go to the lab three. Uh, before we do the lab three, uh, let's have a review. What is DNS and like what is the record type for DNS? Uh, if you can look at these images, just imagine what happened if we want to visit a website, example.com. So what should we do first? Just follow the steps, right? Uh, the first step, we type example.com in our browser. Then the first thing is not to send a request to the like uh, the web, web server, but we need to go through the DNS check because we don't know the IP address yet. So we have to go to here. Go to this part. We, from this part, we type the URL in the browser, then we need to send this URL to the DNS server. And it will have a check. It will do all this kind of check, iteration DNS check. And finally, we get the IP address of the example.com. So now we know the, what is the address of the destination. So we can send the packets directly to the server and we can get a response. So that's the step. So before we visit a website, we need to know what is the IP address so we can send the packets. This is very important. And today we are going to focus on this part will not be the uh like web server stuff
the first thing we need to know is about the dig command. Let's try all these kind of commands. Let's try this one first. So you want to try it in your VLAB. For example, in here. I have already logged into my VLAB. We can run the dig command and you can see the output. So what did we do here? We need to know like what is the answer? What is the response for the dig command? Row by row. So the first thing you want to know is about the flags. You can just simply search on Google to understand what is what is the QR R D R A means. You need to know what is the flag at first. So this kind of stuff is is a kind of abbreviation. You need to search it to understand it, and this is the question session. So we are requesting for this one which means root domain. What is the NS record? And the answer section, we should we will ask the answer for this. And in the additional section, it will have more information related to the answer section. For example here, this is the like root DNS server. And as you can see in the additional session, we can see this record is just exactly the same in the answer section. The, it re reveals the IP address of it. So now we know how to contact with this root server DNS. And after the additional section, we can see some like, statistics about this query. And this one is very important. The server, which means we are asking, we are sending the request to this server and get this result. And you will be used, uh, it will be used in one of the questions. Okay, let's have a look of the other commands like diggoogle.com, which means we want to know what is the IP address of google.com? Let's just have a run of it. Dig. Then you can see, we are asking about the google.com in type A, which means the IP address of the Google. And here is the answer. So now we know this is the IP address of google.com. And next one, we can see there is A in the end. So this will specify which kind of records are we looking for. As you can see here, basically the same response because if we didn't type A, we will still asking for the type A. If we want to check the other kind of uh, like records, let's say NS records, then we need to specify at the end of it. So if we want to check different kind of DNS records, then you need to specify at the end of the command. And we have already done this. And what is the last one? The add. 8.8.8.8. So this is the stuff I mentioned before. In here, as you can see, this one, this one is our local DNS server. So we want to know, sometimes we want to ask different, different server about the, their records, right? So this is the command how we use to ask another, like, another domain name server to give us the answer. 
Let's try to run it. In here, as you can see here, the IP address seems to be different, right? If we ask about the IP address of our, uh, of the google.com with the local DNS, it will get 142.250. But in here, if we ask about this DNS server, which is the Google DNS server, it will give us another IP address. This is strange, isn't it? Do you have any idea why do we have different records in different server? Okay, let's just draw this and figure out how could this happen. So we will have a like we lab machine and we are going to ask the local DNS, which is the uh, what's the IP address? And another one is the 8.8.8.8, which is the So if you send a request to the local DNS about what is the IP address of google.com, it will give us this answer. It will say uh, the IP address will, will be equal to this IP address. But when we ask the another DNS, so it will give us another answer. Like if we send a request to here, it will say google.com equal to this IP address. So we have two different answers. Like which one is the correct one? Two one seven one six. You can try to visit this IP address in your browser. So let's let's try to visit them. Okay, so let me try to uh, visit this website in here. Give me a sec. Okay, we use the Chrome to visit them. As you can see here, this is the IP address, 172.217.167.68. And we are using HTTPS. And you can specify what is the port number 443. 
And you can see it's not private, it's not safe. But anyway, we can visit them. As you can see, we have reached the Google server. And how about the other one? 142. So HTTPS 142. And if you didn't specify the port number, it's also OK. Because the HTTPS, the default port number is 443. So you can go, and it's still Google Server, right? So both of the answers is the correct one. But it seems they have two different IP addresses for the same destination. Uh, our local DNS server will give us the records, which is the fastest one. So if you try to ping this to IP address, uh, the first one should be quicker. And you can play around with this stuff by yourself. And I have already put the answer for the, uh, it's not the answer, it's the uh, like quick notes about the answer in here. So you can have a check in here. Exercise three. Then you can see, uh, I already give you how to get the answer by running this kind of command. I didn't write the answer directly because I want you to figure this out by yourself but like it will be very easy to get the answer if you're following the instructions so don't worry too much about this part let's just have a look of the questions what is the ip address let's just try to do some of the question so you get the you get the idea how to run the deep command to figure out this kind of question. What is the IP address? So we use the D command for stem the ID. IP address, this is the IP address, right? And yep. And what type of DNS query? This is the type, right? And you can do the other stuff by yourself should be pretty easy. The hardest problem is in here, the question 10. In the exercise, you need to simulate iterative DNS query. So you may have no idea what is iterative, iterative DNS query. Let's just have a quick look of the Oh, sorry, I didn't log in. Please let me, give me a sec to do the logging. Okay. Exercise three. We are going to check the DNS. So if we go to the lecture slides, uh, by the way, the lecture slides is very important for the midterm exam. You you need to go through every slide to understand everything inside to get a good mark. Okay, so we. Here is the steps, as you can see. If we ask about the IP address for one of the uh, URL, then we need to send a request to our local DNS server. But our local DNS server like, may have no idea what is the IP address of this website. So what should we do? It will go to the root DNS, and it will go to the 
top level domain DNS server. Then it will go to the authoritative DNS server to get the correct answer for the IP address. And then it will get back to you about the IP address. So in the ex exercise, we want to simulate how the local DNS server will communicate with this kind of DNS. Uh, this kind of DNS server. So we are pretending ourselves is the local DNS server. And let's see how it goes. The, this one is the destination, is the URL that we want to check about the uh, IP address. So if you try to run the command, the command directly, lyre zero zero unsu dot edu dot au. You can still get the answer, right? But what we want you to do is to do the rec like non recursive check, step by step. Let's try to do this one step by step. So you want to find the name server of the root domain. So you firstly, you need to run this command. Then you will get this one, right? And with the IP address. Sorry, type the wrong one. You, sh you should use this command, dig dot ns, because we are looking for the name server. And then you can see these are the like the name server for the root domain. Then we need to run another one, which is the au, so au dot, and looking for the name server. And we are going to specify the IP address we are asking for. You can see this is the IP address is from here. So we are running a, this command. Then we come to here. Then we are asking about the IP address of this one. This one and the edu.au with the name server. Then we can do here. We just change the IP address. And we are looking for what is the name server for UNSW right now. And here are the answers. Name server for UNSW, the IP address. So we just change this one. And what is the name server for uh, CSE? Computer Science, Engineering, Faculty. We are looking for the, uh, what is the domain name server for the faculty. So now you can see, this is the domain name server for our faculty. And this is the IP address. So you can run the last step by checking what is the IP address for our destination, liar 00. And this time we are asking for the A records because we want to figure out what is the IP address of it. And see if we get the answer. Yes, we did get the answer. And please notice this. In the flags, we should have double A inside the flags, which means this one is the authoritative answer. 
we uh, it's the official answer from the name server. If you you have the double A in your flags, which means this record is reliable, is provided by authoritative uh, DNS server. This one is pretty important. And that's it. That's the uh, question 10. So basically just follow the steps in the quick notes in here. I already put a quick notes about how to run this kind of stuff. So just follow the steps. We'll spend more time on exercise four. It's, a, it's about the programming stuff and it's the hardest problem in the exercise. So do you want me to explain it like from zero or from some like template code? Like in detail or only in high level stuff? And yeah, we are going to play with the sockets. Yeah, if you want me to explain like in detail, we will go from very basic basic stuff. Otherwise, we will just go through the uh, like designing stuff. Uh, only write some hint of, of how to do the exercise for, but this kind of stuff is high level design, but not in detail. If you want, we can like go through the template code and see how to do this one step by step. And you can find the templates code in here. In the lecture slides, you can see some sample client server program. Then we can come to the TCP server. This one, just copy and paste to the VLAB. and we can play with it. And Uh, this one is Python 2. Let's do the Python 3. Uh, I can just change the print. Should be fine. Ready to receive. And you can try to run this code by yourself as well. Hmm, doesn't work. Let me try to run it here.
This is one of the common question we have here. Yeah. So if you have this error, which means you didn't close the socket properly, then you need to reboot the program, reboot the uh, VLAB, or you need to change the port to another one. Okay, it's now ready to receive. Then we try to run the client in here. We try to run it. Python 3 TCP demo client. Uh, Rule input is not defined. So this program is not working here properly. Let's just fix it. This one in here, we just change it to Python 3. Okay, input lowercase sentence. We say hello, uh, the object lies. So I reckon we have an error here, so we need to fix the template code. Send sentence. Yeah, we do have an error. We need to encode it. Then we run it. Okay, so we get a response from the server. It says, uh, hi from server. And we can try again. So you can see we get a response from the server. And that's how these two client, uh, how this client communicate with the server. You can play with it, but it should be like, it should not be very hard comparing to the last week's stuff. But this week we are playing with the TCP one. So you can see the difference here. The sockets, when we initialize the sockets, we are using the different parameters. And the method we send the stuff, if you still remember, we we were using the send to function to in the UDP. But for the TCP, we use send function instead. So this is the main difference. And let's have a look of the task for the labs in here. Uh, labs three, what is the task? Is to is to create a connection socket, and this will use the HTTP one point one to do the connection. So you need to write a like web server. You need to write a web server which allows you to visit what is uh visit the local file, and I think they have already provided some local file in here so you you may want to save it just download this html file and you can try to open this one in your browser then you can see this is a web page with two sentences so we let's just put this one into our relab This is the HTML file. When we visit the HTML file, it will show us two sentences. And what's next? We are going to write a TCP server, which can allow us to visit this HTML file. Do you have any idea? So you need to know, like, how can we use the browser to communicate 
with the server. Let's have a quick drawing on this one. So in the in the question, we need to use this one. So we will have two stars, which is the the first one should be the client client which is your chrome browser and the server should be your like python 3 like tcp uh, server.py and they should be able to communicate with each other by using the HT, like HTTP 1.1 like HTTP request then you need to send the HTTP response that's what we are going to do in here because we don't need to do the client it's just a browser we don't need to do anything about it, but we need to finish about the server part. We need to write a program for the server, which can send the HTTP response. If you still remember, we need to do something in the VLAB like this. You can go to the electric slides to have a check of the HTTP content. If you have no idea how to send, uh, what, what is the HTTP? We are going to see request. Okay, so you need to know what is the HTTP request message in the lecture slides. In the server, we are going to receive this kind of request. So you need to just uh, like try to split the message into different fraction, like what is the method and what kind of resource are we looking for? And what is the HTTP version and etc. You need to know like what do we have inside the request, then you can understand and send the response. And when we talk about the response, it's and it should be in another different format, as you can see here. The first row of the response in here is the HTTP 1.1, which means the version, and this is the status code. And this one as well. And this is the header. And besides the headers, we still have some data to be sent. And that's the difference between the response and request. So firstly, we need to figure out like what is the HTTP message format. Then we can do the programming. Okay, let's try to do it right now. We will play around with the template code in here. Yeah, I just copied this code from the website. You can download it as well. So let's try to play with this one and see how it will be communicate with our Chrome browser. Let me just do a small modification after we run the client, before we do the client. Mm. So when we receive the connection, then we receive the message. But in here, we delete these two. We delete these two. So we didn't send a response yet. We just want to pre print what is the content we have received. What is the content here? If we get any content, we just simply print it content dot decode. We won't want to print 
everything we have received in the server side. And let's see how it goes. We restart it. Ready to receive. Then we use the Chrome browser to visit our website 127.0.0.1 and with the port number 13000. Okay, the page isn't working because our server does not respond to it, right? Didn't send any data. We, we don't have any response. But in here, we can see in the server side, we have already gathered requests, including like what kind of resource are we looking for? This is the HTTP request. So, Let's try to do more things based on this. We can say uh, like print, we have a request from the address. So we can from the client. Let's try to run it again. Uh, our address already in use. So because we didn't close the socket properly, so let's try and change to another one. What number? Ready to receive. Then we visit our server, the IP address plus the port number. Then we try to visit this one. It didn't send any data because we don't have any response yet. So you can see we have a request from this client here. And here are the request content. See? And now let's try to send a response and see how it goes. And let's if you still remember, we need to use the socket dot send, use this function to send any content if you want. And in here, we try to send the index HTML here. So let's see how to send this one. Firstly, we need to read the file with the reef clauses in here. And you want to open the file. So reef open. Which file? What is the file name? It's index.html. Index.html. And what is the open method? It's rb read in bytes as HTML file. Then we want to send this one, send the HTML file so if we get any kind of of request we will just send this this html file to the client and let's see if it's working okay i just already in use so you need to solve this problem by yourself because in here when i close the uh, when I close the server, I didn't close the socket properly. You need to run this command every time we like falsely close the program. So make sure you run this command before you exit the pro program. So you need to do some extra job on this. But let's just focus on our main task right now. We are going to send a response right now and see how it goes okay we are running in another server uh, another port this is the new address okay doesn't work ah, it's not required uh, it says 
like we have a problem on this part because it, sh it is not be able to be sent. Hmm. So we have some error here and we can have a check. We refuse to connect. So there is some error here. Let me just try to debug this one. We can set a debugger here. And try to run it. So you can click the spider at this part and then we run it with the debug mode. Oops. Okay, it's running. Then we can visit this one. Now we come to here. Now we can do here. And here are the like console so we can use to do the debugging. And we can check if we have this one. HTML file. Uh we need to read it because it's the IO objects instead of a bytes file. So now we know the reason that we can send the response because we want to read the content first. HTML file content equal to this one dot read. So we need to read it into this these variables and then we send these variables. Okay. Now let's see how it goes. We We close it and we rerun it in another port number. And we can try to run it. Try it right now. <clears throat> oh, it says broken pipeline. Maybe some error. Let's try it. Run it again. It says we cannot send the response to here. So there is another error. And let's figure this out. And when you have the pro problem in here, then you need to have a check. If we get any kind of, of response in here. Okay, we didn't, we are not able to respond anything in here. So let's just try to change this one. To another one. Hmm. I see. This could be the problem because we use an wrong socket to send the response. And let's try again. So in the socket programming, sometimes it's a little bit confused. We have different sockets in the server side, as you can see here, connection socket and the server socket. And we change to this one and run it, ready to receive. And let's visit. The page isn't working. So at least we have the response right now. So we need to fix what kind of 
response is not valid. Hmm. Okay, seems we, we cannot see what is the response. But as we can see here, we already send a response to the client, but the client does not understand it. So let's just try to, how about we simply open this one with the editor and we just copy this one. Because we want to send a response, so we can just run it. Like in the lecture slides, we go to the HTTP part. HTTP, we just write a HTTP response. What is the response for this one? We need to write something like this. And this is a request. We are going to reply with this kind of stuff. So at least we need to have this one. Let's say hello in here. Instead of sending a file, let's try to send with this one. Ah, uh, I reckon I use an wrong method to send the file, but let's have a try of this one first. Seven. Okay, ready to use. Then we visit. Okay, so we have the correct status code here, 200 OK. See? And now we are going to try to Let's try to send a hello in here. In here, eight, did you see that? The hello as the response. So when we try to visit, the different, uh, different path like hello dot html, we will still get a response because no matter what kind of re re request we have received, then we will reply the same message, which is not pretty wise. But how about like if how about we want to like reply different stuff according to the request as you can see here in the request we have requested different stuff in the request so we want to ex extract this kind of information from the request and then send it to the client side so this kind of stuff is the string manipulation. But let's let me explain how to respond the index HTML first. So 
if we want to send the HTML file, we still need to open it. We've opened the index.html with the RB mode as file. So HTML content go equal to file.read. And we want to send the content with this one with the HTTP header at first. Otherwise, the browser will not understand it. And let me just comment this one. And we need to send this one first. And then we we send the HTML content later. Let's see, let's see, let's see how it goes. Ready and run it. One three zero zero nine. Okay, so now we can uh, get the HTML file, and let's see if we can get the images. Let me download an images. Let's try to send a response to this one. Index the JPG. Let me change this one to the JPG. We want to visit the images. And we run it. Okay, so we can visit the images right now. So that's the way we, how we send the file. Uh, just pay attention here for the function I used. I used the send all function instead of send. And that, I think that's the reason I didn't make it before. Another reason for this one is for the HTTP header, response header. I didn't put a header before I send the file content. Because if I didn't send this row, the browser will not be understand like what do I mean? So we want to have a look over the slide at first to understand how they communicate with each other. Then how can we write the program? Like we still have lots of work to do. For example, we need to pass the request. What are they looking for? What are they looking for? They are looking for the like which which uh file, right? If they are looking for this one, what kind of response should I rep reply? For example, if I want to reject the request, then I should reply for or for not found. Let's try to modify this one. Uh so we don't want this one. We don't want this part. Well, once we have received the request, no matter what kind of request are they sending, we just reply, we don't have this file. So it should be 404 not found you can just simply copy it in here okay and let's see how it goes you can 
change the phone number, run it, ready to receive, and we can refresh. Then you can see it's failed, cannot be found. For for error. So that's what should we need to make the response, and you need to write more code, beside based on this one, because I only teach you how to send a file. But you still need to do the judgment, like what kind of file do I need to send? If I visit different paths, then I should reply with different files. Is that enough? Like, do you want me to show more about like how to do the manipulation? Because like different student may have different requests for this one. I'm not sure if you are familiar with the string manipulation in here. But I think this should be sufficient for most of the students. Like, do you know how to extract this part of the request and then make the judgment? Anyway. Just let me know if you have like any request. I'm happy to do more, but let's see how it goes. But I want to remain the challenge in this part. It will be very helpful for your assignment. Okay, I think that's all for the a lab three and let me have a look of what kind of question do we have well, we have a question regarding to lab two so let's have a look lab two The timeout is 600. Yeah. Yes. So you need to have a timeout for 600 milliseconds. That's correct. Yeah. So when you set a timeout, you can use the command, for example, in here listen uh you can set server socket dot set timeout but in here is uh usually we put it uh, integers here this means we set timeout as one second uh, if you want to do like 600 you can do like this it will be 600 So the programming task for today, the main stuff is how to send a file. As you can see, we need to write something like this to make a response. And other thing is about the logic. Like you need to judge what kind of file are we requesting for. So you can send different file in different response. Yeah, if you have any trouble, just let me know. Otherwise, I just stop in here. Just remain the challenges for you.
Yeah, but if you are struggling for this, please let me know. Yeah, thanks for coming. See you next week. Yeah, if you don't have any questions, feel free to leave earlier. Uh, for lab two, exercise three, this one. Step one, question one, what is the status code? Yes. Uh, yeah, let's just open, open this one. So you are talking about like what is the status code and but uh, the thing you mentioned is wrong. Let me open the wild shark first. Okay, my wild shark got stopped. I, so I need to close it falsely. Oh, I cannot cure it. Um, I have some problem on my VLAN, so I cannot open it. Let me try to. No, I can't run it. The so give me a sec. I run it in my own machine. Yeah, the status code is different. Let me download this one first. Is it trace file one or trace file two? Trace file one. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
should be this one. Okay, let's see my wow shot. This one. So we are looking for the status code. I reckon you know how to have a check of the status code, right? Status code is in here. The status code you can apply as a column. So in here, status code 200, 404. And if it's the request, then we will have no status code. The request will have no status code. But the response will have the status code. So we are asking about the status code here. Yes. Oh, I, I think you didn't have a check of the electric device. I have shown you before. So please go through the electric slides. And as you can see here, only the response have the status code. And which one is the answer we are asking for? We are looking for. Yeah, exactly. So you can see, why do we have two different status code here? because there are two different requests. The first one is requesting for the HTML file. And the second one is requesting for the ICO file, which is the icon, the icon of the web page. So usually when we, rec when we visit a website HTML file, we will send this request automatically to get the icon of the website and just like uh, just like this one if we visit this website if we refresh the page and you can see the icon is in here if we visit google you can see the icon at the left corner so we are requesting for the icon but some web page does not have the icon so they will reply 404. I think I, I forgot to mention one of the stuff for the assignment for the programming task. It's about the consistent connection. Consistent connection. Yeah, I reckon they are looking for the Consistent connection, 1.1. I think you need to have a check in here. Reload. We need to check the ID. Yeah. 
yeah but never mind as long as it's HTTP 1.1 it'll be fine yeah yeah we, we, we need to follow the instruction here this one the system we need to have a header to keep alive Mm, HTTP HTTP one point one is persistent. So you can have a check of the lecture slides. What is HTTP one point one? Persistent control in I reckon this one in the lecture notes week two. One point one. system HTTP Don't worry too much about this part, as long as your program is working. Uh, because I saw some discussion on the forum about this one. But I reckon it should not be a huge problem in here. Then just just follow the steps and do and just do the programming one. The persistence should not be a huge problem. Just follow these steps to run the program and have the same output. We are going to test the HTML file and the PNG file. For the date header, does it only in response and not in request? For the date one, this one? Yes, when we send the like request, we, we didn't specify what is the request when we sent. You can check out one by one. Or you can apply as a column in here. You can uh can date plus modify and date apply as column. You can see no date in the quest.
question two. We cannot find the which one? Exercise three. Question two. What was the HTML file of the browser which last modified at the server? Uh, it says last modified header, right? Last modified. So you are looking for the last modified. So in the re in the request, the first one. Usually you will have no last request. But for the second one, you may have. You can find it here. Oh, yeah, it doesn't say the request, it does just say the response, right? So, in the response, we will have this one. So, we are looking for the response. Response, we have this header last modify and the date. Do you know like what is the difference between these two? So firstly, you need to understand what is this header and what is this header? And the date, which means when we receive the re request and we generate the response. And you can see the value between them is different. Like what is the last modified? Which one is earlier? Yeah, last modified is earlier. This means this web page has been modified at this time. So we may like modify the web page before and we may generate the response in another time. So this will specify when did we modify the file. This one is useful for the in other scenario. Let's see the trace file too. The trace in the trace file too, we can see it is quite useful. Let me download the trace file too. This one. And this one you can see we are sending the same request. 200, okay. And th this one is not modified. You can see the second response in another trace file is uh, not modified, which means it is related to the last modified header. Last modified, this one. We specify this, the time of when did we edit the file. And in the second request, we will send if modify things. Did you see that? Apply, apply as a column. Oh, it's too long, sorry. I shouldn't apply this one. Last mod if modify things. I can't I can't do that. You can see this is the time five thirty five and in the response it, it will have a last modified five thirty five. So we use the time to verify if we have any updates on the website. If there is no update, then we just then we just ignore it. We will have we will not receive any response. 
otherwise they will send me the new response. So there are two different usage. For the dates, we just want to know when did we generate the response. But for the last modify, we want to specify if we have any new web page in the future. So the last modify header is for the future request. As you can see here, there are two requests requesting for the same web page. And the second one, we are requesting for the same web page, but we will attach with the last modify header uh, uh, if modify things. If they modify the file since this time, then they will send us the web page. Otherwise, it will reply 304 no modified, which means there is no update. So they don't need to send the same page again. And they save the traffic. So this two header is for different purposes. That's all good. Thanks for coming. Uh, for question five, does the data contain inline base text? No. Yeah, I think so. I think here. Response. This one, right?
Um, yes, but for the icon, I, I don't think we have icon. For the icon, we have for for in response. So you can see, actually, we don't have icon. But it does have some information here. It's the XML. I think it's just asking about like, what is the content for the response? So we are talking about this HTML response only. Don't don't worry about the IC icon. Return the, the file con. Uh, uh, this one. You mean the second response? Or this one.
Yeah, the second one, we have no content because the status code is different. This one is not modified. So you need to search online, like what is the mo not modified means? Uh, what is the meaning of this? Just, just Google it and you will get the answer. Uh, this one is no icon. You can see the request. Request is for the HTML. It's not the icon. There are two same requests. So this this time is a different story. Yeah, maybe you need to like try to understand it. And I have already explained like how they work in last video. Uh, yes, because we already like in the first response, we already get it. Then we send the same request. And the server said, you already have the file, so I don't need to have it. Uh, I don't need to send it again. 